I went through so much in such a short amount of time. I needed some outlet, and there were many, many bad outlets and negative environments that I could have been in. And I knew that this was a go-to for me if I could just capture it, and so I tried, and I've been pretty good about it. Writing is my favorite thing to do, but it's probably the most difficult thing. Put it between my palms yep. like this. It's like that. Because the memory is in your forearms. A candle fell from my dresser and lit my room on fire. And it seemed like a small fire, so I thought I would put it out. I thought I was successful at first, but I wasn't. And it ended up burning the whole house down and burned my hands so bad that he had to amputate my fingers. I wrapped a blanket up in my arms by my comforter and then pulled my hands back so this huge amount of comforter in front of me. And I, well, I put it out. Well, um, it got hot a little bit. My mom had passed away four months before that, so I wanted to save her house. So I hung on just a moment longer, you know, and then it got really hot really fast. Nine. And when I went to pull back, I couldn't pull back. Ten. Jody's got a little bit of weakness in her shoulders, and she's got to be able to carry the weight of her prosthetics that she's getting. And we want her to be able to tolerate having them on all day and lifting them all day and not have any shoulder injuries. Well, Katie's awesome. That's where it started. <laughs> she really is. Uh, Katie was very unique. When I came in and started talking to her about, you know, what you know was available for my hands, I told her I want robotic hands. Is it if you can just make them and plug them in my nerves, that would work, you know? She said, you know, it's possible to get that. And um, she told me about a conference she had been to, and she brought up Touch Bionics. Um, and I did a little research on my own. We can make hands that look like hands that don't do anything. Right. And it wouldn't give her any more function other than them looking like hands. There's body powered ones, but you need wrist motion. And because of where her scar tissue is, she has very limited wrist motion. So that's not functional for her at all. If you look at my hand, imagine trying to figure out how fingers are gonna go naturally on that thing, you know? I mean, so she figured out where the fingers angle was and then she had to put the thumb on, okay? So if the thumb goes here, because it has to sit this way, my electrodes are here. So she had that problem with how she was going to position the thumb and the electrodes because they were close together. And Katie did that almost in the first try. All these cables will eventually be nicely hidden. And because she was, still has muscle motion in her hand, we can use these remote electrodes and that means she got this new technology. I, I trust her, I just really do. I plan on sticking with her all this time. And I mean, I drive 216 miles, you know, round trip to get here. So I, that's how much I trust her. I wouldn't want to work with anybody else. <laughs> when you go through this, you go through loss. So there are those, you know, levels of grief for loss, but I really think it, people could move past those. Just put them to the side and accept what it is right in those moments. I mean, the first time I saw my hand, arms in the hospital was probably the hardest day of my life other than, you know, losing my mom. I was hating them right then, you know? And it sounds crazy, but I got this notion to, to apologize to my hands, you know? And I, I looked at them and I pulled them up to, I mean, they were you know, wrapped up, but I put them up here and I kissed them. And I said, I love you. I'm sorry and I love you the way that you are. 